back to the Tradesman channel. My name is Jim in case you're new here. We have a special one on this one guys. Uh, we have a brand new tool to go into the blacksmith shop that is going to be very handy I'm hoping. Hopefully everything goes well. But before I reveal the tool I'm going to do a little teasing. We got to build a roll around stand for this thing to live on so we can move it out of the way. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you at the big reveal. So I bet you, you guys are wondering by now, what is this? What is this stand we made? Now, if you were watching the last video, judging by the view counts, not a lot of people are right now, but that's probably more of a symptom of me not putting out a lot of stuff. So anyway, if you're wondering what this is, I should just leave it under the bag, close the video, maybe we'll do a part 20 of this. Every other video we'll just talk about lifting the bag a little bit to see what's under here, but uh, I can't do that to you guys. It's just not right. So anyway, apologize for the noise in the background. I've got the forge running because right now that's my shop heat in here and it's nice and toasty. It's cold outside and I don't feel like freezing my balls off. But anyway, this is a tool I've been wanting to get for a very long time to help help with a lot of the processes in my metalworking journey, my blacksmithing journey to help me make tools for making tools and things of that nature. I guess I could take the cover off. Should I? I guess I can. So what do we have under the black contractor bag? That's the, that's the question. Ta-da! You guys even tell what it is yet? All right, so this is a Sieg X2D mini mill, and if you can see the, so we can end mill up to a half, or a 0.6 inches, face mill of 1.2 inches, you can drill up to a half an inch, table travel 11.8 inches by 5.1 inches, and then we have a vertical head, the Z-axis, of 9.3 inches. Well, let's see what else we have. So the spindle speed goes from 100 RPMs to 2,500 RPMs. We have a high and a low, a variable speed DC motor at 110 volts. Kind of cool. Now I can assure you that I do not know shit about machining work except for I watch a lot of YouTube videos on it because I have a curious mind and I've been wanting to get into it for a long time. So let's see how smooth everything is. I haven't even turned this thing on yet or any of that just to see what it's about, but I can tell you first impressions. Everything is, seems very solid. The weight of this, it's like 120, 126 pounds. 
and for such a little machine it's actually nice and solid there's a couple things we're going to be changing on this over the future and upgrading one is a belt drive kit you can get for this because they have nylon gears in there and honestly it seems to be the only really cheap thing about this that uh, I've read about and seen so far but littlemachineshop.com which is where I bought this it uh, cost me just over a grand free shipping to my door through Amazon I'll put a link to it in the description below um, so anyway that's where I got it. Now littlemachineshop.com has a pretty good reputation for backing their products, things like that. And no, there's no affiliation with this for this video. They don't even know I bought it, except for they shipped it here. So anyway, let's look things over, shall we? So it's kind of neat on the Z-axis. So we have our, we can lock it down so it doesn't move and I guess we have to do that in our milling operations. We unlock it, if I pop this handle out, See if I can do it here. Come on. There we go. I always make it harder. It can act as a regular drill press, so that's kind of a fast travel. We can use it as a drill press. If I lock the handle in, there's some cogs there. This can move in thousands. This is our, I don't know what you properly call it, but you can see, sorry for shaking the camera, guys. see how much that slows that down. That'd be kind of handy. And then when you're ready to go back to fast travel. Alright guys, I hate to do the shaky camera on you. I turned the forge off so we can hear things a little bit better. So a quick walk around. Everything actually looks pretty good and solid on it. These are actually metal ends. Now there's a Harbor Freight version of this same mini mill. A lot of these mini mills are built by this company right here. Uh, your Grizzly, same manufacturer. I believe the Eastwood one, the Harbor Freight one, there's a few of them. Now from what I've been reading and able to find out, you get a little bit different qualities depending on who you actually go through to buy it. So I guess Sieg makes some little different specifications. I was happy to see that this right here is all metal. Apparently the Harbor Freight ones, these are plastic. But I'm actually quite impressed how smooth that is. It turns real smooth. It's kind of nice. So you have neoprene ways protectors on here. It's kind of nice to keep the chips out. We can lock our x-axis down there. Now let's see, lock our y-axis down right there, and of course up here, this guy back here, we can lock our z-axis, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to unlock them because we have some stuff to set up on here. Walking around the mill, so we have a potentiometer. This controls the speed of a fuse in there, power indication light. For when the power is on, this green light right here, sorry for the lighting, comes on when you turn the potentiometer on. That actually, you can turn it off there also. Start and stop switch. And here our motor. That is our DC 110 volt motor. That's how we're able to get the variable speed. So this motor is 6,000 RPM, but there's a gear reduction and the gears are down in here. And like I said, we're going to be changing that over to the belt drive probably within the next month or so. So for right now, for our operations, we have a high and low lever. Sorry for the lighting. This camera lens on, uh, the camera lens I'm using right now is not the best lighting. All right, so we come around the back. We have a circuit board in here. It kind of acts as the power supply. It converts the AC to the DC for the motor. And we also have a stop right here for the Z-axis travel. So if I'm doing multiple processes, oh, sorry, I can lock that in. It came with the Jacobs chuck, which is nice. And then for taking that out, this guy right here and we'll demonstrate all that. So let's get our 
we'll get our mill vise on there things like that and I'm, I'm going to be feeling my way through this as I do it because like I said I'm new to this I know what a lot of the stuff is but I haven't actually physically done it so it's going to be a learning experience should be fun but as I said it's actually a pretty solid little machine so I'm going to pop this off for demonstration purposes but I do not plan on milling with this thing without that on because from the looks of things the chips fly everywhere so they come with a tool kit. Pretty much all the tools it looks like you need to work on this thing. And they actually don't seem to be terrible tools. Oh, where's everything else? Now when this is in use, there's a cap to go on there. I see a lot of people leave it off, but I have no plans to do that. Now, we get a rod right there as a stopper. And then a 17 millimeter wrench, which they send. So this is an R8 setup here, so anything that fits a bridge port will fit it. Now you know my B&B &B forging hammer it's turned into my all-purpose shop hammer too. <laughs> Slight tap. Unthread the drawbar all the way. And that pops out. They're really pretty easy for changing over things. The Jacobs truck's going to be nice. I mentioned in the last video my drill press is getting clapped out, so this is kind of one of those needed things. So being this uses R8 collets, I did get a collet set for it, 8th uh, inch to 7 8 I didn't spend a hell of a lot on them. I think it was like 30 40 bucks, but uh, I'm going to need them if I'm going to be doing this stuff. It just goes down the standard sizes. Now there's metric, there's metric collets, there's all kinds of different collets. So these So that would be your R8 collet. Has a keyway in there. So one of my end mills came. It's a quarter inch with a. Uh... Oh, come on. Quarter inch end mill. I put it in the collet. Slides up in there. And just snug it in. From what I'm seeing, it doesn't look like guys are really forcing them down. We'll just snug them in. The next thing we have is our mill vise. So this is a three inch mill vise. From what I was reading, you really don't need much more than that. But uh, this I ended up getting for $60. I think it was around 60. I'll throw a link in the description for it. Now this is the Vivor, or Vivor, however you say it. I've heard mixed reviews on these. Some people love them, some people hate them. But I did clamp some things in it just to see how it felt, how it uh, actually feels quite solid. And it does have a rotating, you can rotate it and set it. But for right now, our process is, I'm just looking to go straight on with stuff. So and as I go, I will set this little roll around cabinet up, get some drawers in it for all the tooling and stuff. 
Now I did it on this because I didn't want to clutter up the workbench. Not that I don't have it cluttered right now, but uh, I wanted to be able to move this around. Plus there's a lot of chips and I don't, I really don't feel like having my bench just completely inundated with uh, metal chips all over the place. So we'll set this aside for now because it's kind of a non, non important piece. Now this mill comes coated with Cosmoline, so what I did when I uncrated it, I got some uh, WD-40 and we cleaned, soaked it down and cleaned it up. But I see some people, some people like to set this offset. I noticed some people, uh, from what I was watching, some people put a couple different fixtures in there. Some and like some auto rotating uh, some index heads, but I'm just going to set this up for now. We have some hardware that came with it. Well, there are a couple of T slots. Now I would imagine so. I've got a dial indicator, things like that coming. They're supposed to be here Sunday. So hopefully they get here so I can really test this stuff out. Now the mill did come with a couple of T-slots. Or a couple of these guys here. And they just fit in the end for hold down for your fixtures. There you go, change the lens, that works a lot better. I'm by eyeing it right now, but what we'll have to do when my dial indicator comes, we'll get this all set nice. And that actually looks pretty damn even all the way through. Looking to make sure I'm not rubbing on there. I've got about a a <laughs> couple thousandths in between there. Look at that, already talking to lingo. That right there is super smooth. Now what I was doing on top with it probably wasn't really made for that. It's a tiny bit. But that end cut is gorgeous. Nice. Alright, so this is a bit of a short video on this one tonight. But I uh, kind of want to introduce you guys and kind of give you an idea of some of the things to come. This block of aluminum we have in here right now is going to become a fixture for working on draw knives. And I cannot wait to make it. Now, I can see a few things I'm going to have to invest in. I definitely need a good set of machina squares, so I'll have to get those. Uh, I've got a few more end mills supposed to be here Sunday. This, is, this came in first, so I was dying to try it out. This just came in today. This thing came on a tractor trailer, believe it or not, which is funny. Fortunately, it had a lift gate. Now, it's not too terribly heavy. I put it up here by myself, no problem. I didn't film any in that case. I dropped it or something, you know. But uh, it's going to be a different experience. I could say it's very satisfying to watch the chips and the shavings come off of the piece of metal. I can see why so many people enjoy it so much. But we have a lot of things we need to do with this before we actually put it into use. Now, as I said, I'm not speaking from a voice of experience. I'm speaking from everything I've read and have been looking up. If any of you have been watching a long time, you know... I research at nauseum until I do something a lot of times. So what we have to do before we really get seriously about making anything on this, 
we have to tram it. So we're going to take our dial indicator and we're going to make sure that everything here is perfect. I have a bunch of brass shim stock in case we have to adjust anything. Um, again, like I said, we are going to upgrade the motor and we're going to upgrade the pulley system. Now when we upgrade the motor, I'm going to have to wire in a different uh, DC power source because it'll be a 12 volt variable speed DC motor. So that's not a big deal though. You can get the power supplies 30, 40 bucks on old Scamazon. Um, the mill vise, this is a 3 inch Vivor vise I think I said, or Vivor, however the hell you say it. So it seems all right, but we're definitely we're going to want to check all that too. We need to make sure it's locking in square. I can say that as I slide the jaws shut, I don't feel any play at all when I go to tighten it down. Sometimes you go to tighten something down, you can feel it actually lift up a little bit on some vices. This does not do that. Like my hazard fraught drill press vise, it does that. You tighten it in and one of the jaws kicks up a little bit. I did not feel that on here. We have to make sure that the x-axis and the y-axis, everything's running square and true to the cutter head while it's running. So that's just things we're just going to have to make sure is right. Now I'm sure, judging from the looks of this machine, I'm sure it has some decent quality control on it. Uh, really depending on where you're buying them from, again, from my research. It seems if you're buying it from Grizzly, you're probably going to be in good shape. If you're buying these from Little Machine Shop, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, even the Harbor Freight version, I guess, isn't too bad. There's just a little more plastic in some of the parts. But the neat thing is, so Little Machine Shop makes a high torque model of this. And the biggest difference is the column, the casting is a little bit thicker. But it looks like I could take that and actually mount it on this if I wanted to. The high torque model also is belt driven instead of the gears and it has a little bit of a beefier motor. I want to say it has a 600 watt motor, maybe a thousand watt, I can't remember. But uh, this this is a 350 watter. It's not a lot of power in it, but we're going to change that. We're probably going to put like a 600 watt or something like that in there. Now, I'm not as worried about the castings and everything holding up to almost twice the power. I've seen a few people do it now and it looks like they've had good success with it. But I can say the castings and everything seem very beefy. The ways look pretty good. The dovetails look pretty good. I think we're going to be in good shape here. So anyway, also with the cart, now I made this roll around. The pain in the ass about this is you're on casters. And as you're using it, the whole thing wants to move just a little bit. It's not really a big deal because it's not like it's this that's moving. But I noticed, you know, I just kind of taken my time with it. And it wasn't moving too much. Now, we may decide we want this thing in a permanent home. And we may just take the casters off of it. But right now, I kind of like the height of this thing. It's perfect to run it as a drill press. It's, per, it's just at a nice height. I can see my work. Now I, I'm probably going to put a light on here or something like that and go for it. We have parallels coming so that we can work on smaller, thinner stuff. Uh, let's see what else. The dial gate, the dial indicator's coming. A couple of, uh, a few more end mills. So we should be in good shape, at least to get us going. Now, from what I'm seeing buying this thing and just looking up tooling for it, it looks like you can get in the weeds real fast buying a whole shitload of tooling. There's all kinds of stuff you can get for these and make with them. The nice thing is that if I upgrade to a larger mill, which if this goes well, if I like it, if it does what I want it to do as far as helping me in my tool production, then we can upgrade to a bigger one. I have a huge one down in a paper mill that I still have to get home. And that's a 4,500 pound brown and sharp. Now, that's a big machine to fit in here. We also have a big uh, 1954 Martin lathe coming in the spring that I bought. Uh, that's a 10 foot long, 2,800 pound lathe. That's a beaut. That thing is gorgeous. It's in good shape too. So that's coming down the pike. Again, I'm not looking to be a machinist. And I'm not going to tell you guys how to run one of these because I don't know. You're going to watch me learn. You're going to watch me break stuff. It's just like anything else we've always done on this channel. You guys have always watched me learn things. 
from brand new. And it's kind of fun to share that journey as you become better at what you're doing. And uh, I like that. I, I like bringing you guys along when I'm, when I'm trying things out. You guys have watched me learn how to weld on here. You've been watching me learn blacksmithing. Whole lot of stuff you guys have watched me learn. This is just one more thing that we're going to throw in here. But um, anyway, I think I've talked about this ad nauseum tonight. It's like 1 in the morning here. It is time for my ass to go to bed, get some sleep, and tomorrow is a new day and we're just going to get cranking on stuff. I've got some draw knives to forge tomorrow. I've got a few roughed out and it's time to start grinding. Grinding, 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 grinding. Which brings me to one of my first projects for this is I've got to do a new platen plate on my grinder. I noticed in the uh, the knife video, the last one, I must have I I did the uh, platen out of mild steel piece of angle, so that's really no good for that purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the platen plate off of the platen assembly. We're going to pop it in this thing. We're going to face it off with a with an end mill because that's what I have. I don't have a fly cutter or anything yet. And we'll get to that eventually. We're going to face it off. Then we're going to take a piece of 1080 steel, get that nice and flat. I have a piece that I annealed for the purpose and preparation. We're going to get it down to the right size. And we're going to see if this thing will trim down uh, annealed 1080 steel. I have to learn feed rates. I have to learn all that stuff. So... It's going to be a lot to learn, but I think we're up to it. So if any of you have any advice, if any of you own one of these, please leave in the comments below. Tips, tricks, anything, I will take it all. I'm an easy, easy person. So I'm more than willing to learn from whatever knowledge you guys have. I know I have some machinists that watch, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. So anyway, have a good night, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next one.